Chapter 1141 Lady on the Tree The big-eyed thief looked incredibly arrogant, but when it saw the golden bird, the fire on its body extinguished and it tried to flee. The bird wasn't going to let it escape, though. It flapped its wings and flew towards the big-eyed thief's rear. A countermeasure was in place, as the big-eyed thief shone gold and released a thick haze of toxic gas. But the golden bird shone gold, as well. Its talons cleaved through the smoke and grabbed the big-eyed thief, and then tore the fiend in two. Hansen and Queen were frightened by the sight, but they weren't shocked the musical note was able to fight another super creature. What had surprised them, though, was its ability to tear one in half with a single strike. Is that lady an emperor? Hansen asked himself, still reeling from the shock of that grisly sight. The big-eyed thief's yellow miasma still hung in the air, and it was a ghastly smell. The creatures that had been caught inside it had all been killed. The lady made a gesture with her gentle hand and wafted it away. The pleasant fragrance of the tree came back stronger, eliminating whatever was left of the big-eyed thief stink. Having seen what had just occurred to the big-eyed thief, no other creature in the vicinity dared provoke the lady now. But none of the creatures dared leave the area, either. And they remained there, as if to guard the tree until its fruit was ready for consumption. Grabbing this fruit may prove difficult, Hansen thought to himself as he rubbed his head. He was unsure whether or not he could obtain a benefit or be gifted a fruit from the pleasant turn cruel mistress of the tree. If she was an emperor with ten gene locks open, Hansen didn't believe he'd be able to obtain anything, even with the blue dinosaur and disloyal knight by his side. That being said, the other super creatures in the vicinity would be too proud to allow the lady to take everything for herself. If chaos was to arise, Hansen thought he might be able to nab something for himself amidst the carnage. Hansen decided to wait alongside the rest of the creatures, and as he did so, he occasionally chatted with Queen. The two did not speak loudly, though, and whenever they talked, they made sure to do so in whispers. The lady, in the meantime, continued to remain perched in the tree. She swung her little legs delicately as she did. The bird had gone by this point, and the loot had been returned, too. But eventually, the lady raised her arm and pointed her finger at Hans' senator, then she signaled for him to approach. Hansen was shocked. Regardless of race or species, the signal she had just made was a gesture for him to come closer. At that moment, every creature in the region looked over to see who the lady was pointing at. Me? Hansen looked around, acknowledging she meant him without mistake. There were no other creatures around him, after all. The lady smiled and nodded. Don't go. It is too dangerous, Queen pleaded. Although Hansen was strong, the lady was too strange. It'd be a risk to approach, but he didn't want to incite her ire by refusing her summons. It's fine. I can always turn away and leave. Besides, I'm interested in seeing what she wants. Hansen flew over to the tree, leaving the blue dinosaur behind to safeguard Queen. Hansen was rather interested in the identity of who or what the lady actually was, but it was primarily due to the fact the fruit was on the precipice of maturing. Getting that close, in anticipation of that moment, was a good thing. Nothing was better than being able to approach the tree without a fight. Although the lady was frighteningly powerful, Hansen believed he could always escape whenever he wanted to. Without anything barring his passage, Hansen approached the tree with ease. What is it? Hansen asked as he hovered before her. The lady pointed to another branch and bid that he sit with her. Hansen did as she asked and took a seat on the branch, but he made sure to keep his distance and maintain his vigilance. He did not trust the lady, so he exercised every caution he could possibly take while spending time with her. Hansen immediately noticed how good the lady smelled and how her fragrance was actually different than that of the tree itself. Her scent wasn't strong or overwhelming. It was light and refreshing. Pretty lady, do you need something from me? Hansen asked with a smile. The lady smiled in return, her face curious. Has a spirit never laid eyes on such a handsome face before? Did you need to take a closer look? You should take a picture, Han suggested, due to her awkward and intimidating silence. Um, pretty woman, do you mind saying something? Hansen said. The lady maintained her stare in silence. Um, that's okay. We don't need to speak. And I know I'm handsome, so feel free to admire me all you like. Hansen started to look at the jellyfish fruit that were tantalizingly near. The fruit all looked alive, and they definitely seemed to be king-class Geno fruit. There must be more than 10,000 of these things. If they can all increase a person's super Geno points, 
This sanctuary could see the rise of countless more elites, Hansen believed. Hansen had no idea what the fruit did, though. Moment Queen was probably hiding most of the story from him. What is your name? The lady finally asked. Chapter 1142, Broken Bone. The lady's voice was like music, and just hearing it made Hansen happy. My name is Hans Senator, what about you? Hansen asked. If she was an emperor, she'd undoubtedly speak her title. And once she did, he could find out what or who she really was. Xiang Yin, the lady said with a smile. Xiang Yin. Hansen repeated after her, weirded out that it wasn't a name typical of any spirit. Xiang Yin looked at Hansen and pointed at his dragon blood ring, saying, Why would you have that? Has he died? You know Dragon King? Hansen asked with shock. Hansen did not know whether the lady was a friend or foe of Dragon King, so he knew he'd have to tread carefully with his answers on the subject. The last thing he wanted was to have her as an enemy. If you know Dragon King, how have you never heard my name? Xiangin asked with that ever-present smile. Hansen was shocked, and so he asked, Are you one of ancient devil's generals? Xiangin said, Do not avoid my question. Why do you have that ring? Where is he? Hansen eyed Xiangin dubiously, not expecting she might be one of the generals. But at least he now knew why she had summoned him over there, and that was due to his possession of the dragon blood ring. Even if she was a general, though, she could be an enemy of Dragon King. There was no telling whether or not she was friendly with him. Hansen told her, I stumbled across it at the resurrection site. He then went on to tell her the whole story, but with a few modifications. He told her he was only watching the entire thing and he didn't tell her what had actually gone on between him and Dragon King. Xiong Yin, after hearing it all, sighed and said, even Dragon King failed to ascend. Tell me, is he dead? Sister, do you want to become a demigod too? Han Sen, noticing how relatively non-hostile she was, was feeling some relief. She nodded and said, when the flower opens, that is the time. Flower? The jellyfish? They aren't fruit? Han Sen asked with shock. Xiong Yin said, who told you these were fruit? They're just the flowers of this tree. Hansen noticed Xiong Yin being quite relaxed, and so he asked, there are many scary creatures here. Don't you think they might interfere with your attempt of ascension? Xiong Yin glossed over them and said, if I succeed, they are nothing greater than dust compared to me. If I fail, they can have my body. Hansen was shocked. It was then that he understood that the creatures were not there for the tree, but for her. They were waiting to see whether or not she would succeed. If she failed, her flesh would be extremely beneficial and a whole lot more valuable to the creatures than any fruit could be. When she ascended, she would receive the powers of the fourth god sanctuary. If she failed, she would still have a bit of that juice left in her system. Hansen no longer wanted to steal anything from the area. Seeing the beautiful woman happily face a life or death gambit, he felt incredibly antsy. Hansen knew he could not compete with her even if he tried his absolute best. But if she had a chance of becoming a demigod, she was definitely an emperor with at least ten gene locks open. I did not expect to meet someone I could talk to before I departed this place. I would like to provide you with a gift before I depart. Xiang Yin retrieved something weird. The item had been created from bone, and it was oval-shaped. There was a hole on the top, with a number of smaller holes on its body. Hansen had no idea what manner of instrument it was but he knew it had to be incredibly powerful. Hansen said he shouldn't accept such an impressive gift, but his true intent manifested in his hands which lecherously reached out and grabbed it. Xiang Yin smiled and said, This is the broken bone. It was crafted from my collarbone. If I fail, this will be a historical relic and proof of my existence. I am sure you will succeed, Hansen said. Hansen was shocked, though. He thought the generals were all spirits, but if she was telling him the item was crafted from an actual bone of hers, it meant she was a humanoid super creature. Only creatures could create something like this, as spirits could only craft Geno treasures. Hansen did not despise creatures, and he had many as pets like the silver fox. She looked human, besides the fact. She was a stunning woman, and he was hard-pressed to believe she really was a creature. She was no nice and generous to give him a gift such as that. Xiang Yin smiled and suddenly, the flowers above began to shine and fall. They didn't fall off like flowers, though. They were like jellyfish floating down deeper into the abyss of an ocean. The glowing jellyfish were all around the tree, like a dream. 
But the creatures did not admire the beauty of this scene. They instead stared at the center of the tree. Hansen looked to where they did and noticed there was a hole in the tree. The hole was bright, brimming with an untold energy. When the light from inside it got stronger, it was like witnessing a rising sun. The jellyfish flowers began to change their course and fly towards it. Chapter 1143 I'll teach you how to blow a sun. Thousands of jellyfish flowers flew inside the hole in the tree. Its capacity seemed infinite, as each entered without struggle. And as they did, the light inside grew in intensity. Hansen felt the frightening power coming from inside the hole in the tree. It was so powerful, the Dong Shen Aura could not provide an accurate reading. Neither could he see what rested inside, beyond the blinding light. Xiang Yin didn't seem to be focused on the hole. She merely continued to sit on the branch in a carefree manner. She looked at Hansen and asked him, Would you like me to teach you how to blow a soon? Sure. With surprise, Hansen passed her back the soon. This looked to be an important moment, so he did not expect her to set aside time to teach him how to play an instrument. Xiang Yin took the soon and placed her fingers on the holes around the instrument's belly. She placed her lips around the head and blew it, as gentle and pleasant sounds were birthed and heard. Hansen had never seen this instrument before and the notes played were melancholic. It sounded as if someone was crying, or a woman was whispering to the wind in some lonely valley. The sounds were clear and defined, but at the same time not. The sound was reminiscent of a flute, and it was a delight to hear. Whether or not it was the instrument itself, or the talent she possessed, the music produced was beautiful. Hansen could see the notes physically emerge from the instrument, and how they became fairies that danced around them. He was stunned, witnessing it all. The creatures that were dying for the fruit and becoming restless were instantly soothed and calmed when they heard the music. Fortunately, Hansen was powerful enough to not be lulled into a trance. He was able to just sit and admire her energy flow. Xiang Yin was using her energy flow to play the music, and this was something he had never seen anyone else do before. Hansen doubted anyone could produce the same effects, even if they had the instrument to play. Xiang Yin knew she was being scanned by Han Senator. She was a berserk super creature with 10 gene locks open. So his Dongshin aura with 5 gene locks open could not be hidden from her. She was not offended by his actions though. She had decided to teach the young man how to play the soon, and that wasn't going to change. Hansen was shocked and did not expect he'd be able to watch her energy flow, but he was glad he could. He wanted to watch how she blew the soon, and Xiang Yin did not mind the violation. She did not mind him observing her energy flow. Her energy flow was, however, complicated. Merely trying to remember it was very difficult for Han Sr. When she finished playing her song, the creatures continued to sit in silence. Their eyes could not leave her grace so suddenly. The light in the hole then began to fade, and with it, so too were all the jellyfish. A light that was no brighter than a candle was all that was left there. Xiang Yin gave Hansen back his son and said, this is all I can teach you for now. Practice more, and you will be able to play a number of songs successfully. I will practice, Hansen said, as he took back the sewn. He said this to please her, though. Hansen was not really interested in the art of making music, only in the sonic powers that could be manipulated through the instrument. Xiang Yin knew Hansen was not fond of music, either. But she still smiled and said, Return. My time here is up. After that, Xiang Yin turned to approach the hole herself. Hansen did not know what to expect, so he just bid her farewell and made his way back to Queen and Blue Dinosaur. Then, they all watched her go towards the tree. Xiang Yin reached her hand inside and brought something out. The item was what made the hole glow. It was similar to a big water drop, and it wobbled in her hands like jelly. Xiang Yin kissed the blob and then consumed it. When she swallowed it, the scent of her body became much stronger. Her fragrance was so strong, it took on an appearance like smoke. The mist began to fill the entire cavern, giving the place a dreamy look. It was like heaven. Hansen sniffed it and immediately felt refreshed, so much so, he felt several years younger. All the creatures in the area sniffed it, too, and they looked to be really enjoying it. It was a divine treat for them all, as well. The smell of her body hung in the air like a delightful haze. Eventually, it parted like a curtain, and then, a stone door appeared. The door had no markings or anything, but it looked holy. It made all who laid eyes on it feel tiny. Aside from Xiang Yin, all the creatures knelt when seeing the door. The Rat King and Toad King showed great respect as well and did the same. 
the gate to the fourth god sanctuary. Hansen was in absolute shock. When he was in the second god sanctuary, the holy rhino and little fairy had been taken by spirits into the third god sanctuary. Hansen expected a spirit to emerge from that stone door and bring her forward into a new realm, but it remained shut. Xiangin flew around in the mist like a fairy, and it looked like she wanted nothing more than to open the door and go through. Chapter 1144 Ten Steps of the Holy Door The stone door hovered in the air, adamantly remaining closed. The underground cavern was a mighty place, but the door seemed so far away. With Xiang Yin's speed, it looked like she could reach it in the space of a second. But with everyone's bated breath, it felt like she'd never reach there. The mist that was a pleasant smell began to stream towards the door and Xiang Yin followed in its wake. The tallest point of the cavern ceiling was 10,000 meters high, but to Hansen, Xiang Yin felt like she was an entire galaxy away from him. When Xiang Yin reached the door, she placed her hands against it and pushed it partially open. The scary power that came from that small gap immediately frightened Hansen and flattened him down on the ground. It wasn't just Hansen like this, but the creatures all around were pushed down to the ground as well. Only the super creatures could manage to somewhat stand in defiance of that new gravity. Although the super creatures could fight it back, they still looked terrified before that power. Xiang Yin's clothes violently waved in the wind of a phantom typhoon that seemed to stem from that partially open door. But Xiang Yin still managed to stand strong against it all, maintaining her grip on the door she pushed against. As the door slowly opened, more and more of that wind entered the cavern. Soon after, not even the super creatures could stand. Where Xiang Yin was, the wind was even more terrifying. The gusts were so sharp, they cut her like blades and knife through the mist. Xiang Yin frowned and summoned a flute. She blew a few notes towards the door, which manifested as a wall of snakes to aid her in withstanding the force of that invisible storm. She continued her defiance of the door and pushed it with all her might. But soon after, not even the snakes could withstand the gusts. So then, she summoned her lute. Notes emerged from the instrument without it even being played, and the notes took on the form of birds. Like a raven shield of gold, they stood against the fierce phantom winds as a bulwark before her. It did not last forever, though, and each time her protection broke, she'd summon another instrument to create a shield. Over the time it took for her to open the door, she ended up summoning eight different instruments and eight different creatures. Boom. Even the stone door itself quivered. She had managed to open the door fully, but no spirit came through from the other side. In the black on the other side of the stone door, there were stairs. Where they led, none could tell. The dimension inside was distorted and twisted, preventing any clear view by the onlookers. Xiang Yin placed a foot on one of those steps, and the moment she took a step, a transparent fire blazed to consume her. The beasts that accompanied her were useless, and they all turned to soot in the hungry flames that licked them. Xiang Yin's clothes and instruments became cinders and ash in the flame, and she looked to be in agony. The fire was making her suffer, but her resolve was not swayed. She pushed on to take a second step. More fire blazed to envelop her, as all the items she possessed disintegrated into nothing. With Xiang Yin's clothing gone, her flesh was seared through to expose bones that were then catching on fire. That mist began to seep out from the seams and tears of her composition, and so too did magical musical notes. The forces tried to form a veil of protection around her, against the most brutal fire that sought to put an end to her ascension. With every step she took, it seemed like a century had elapsed. And each time she took a step, another one would appear. The transparent fire did not relent as she ascended, and it continued to ravage her as she went. But while it did indeed hurt her, it morphed and warped her super body's genes. Hansen was shocked. When she reached her seventh step, her super body began to collapse. He could not tell how many more steps awaited her. When she reached the ninth step, her entire body was vaporized. Hansen could only see a blurry light reach that ninth step, and the notes and mist that accompanied her had drawn faintly. Ten Steps of the Holy Door I did not expect you to reach the ninth step. You must be the greatest of the eight generals. A weird voice boomed throughout the underground. Quickly, it tried to follow Xiang Yin. Hansen was shocked when he saw who it was. It was Yiksha. He looked different than the last time Hansen saw him. Yiksha looked strange, but as murderous as ever. Hansen knew exactly what he was up to. But with Xiang Yin focusing on her ascension of those brutal steps, she couldn't turn her attention away to focus on anything else. 
Yiksha had appeared at the perfect time to prevent her ascension. He was there now, bitterly seeking to stop her. Hansen realized Yiksha must have been hidden there the entire time. He had waited for this paramount moment to reveal himself and make her fail. By doing that, he hoped to achieve the powers of the fourth god's sanctuary and flesh easily. Prior to this moment, Xiang Yin would have had no trouble exterminating the villain Yiksha was, but she was on the final step of that excruciating climb. She could not be distracted, but it did seem like Xiang Yin herself now acknowledged Yuxia was there. She was shocked by his sudden appearance, and it immediately made her quiver. As she took notice, her notes appeared weaker. Oh, no. Hansen looked at his son and sought to stop Yuxia. Chapter 1145, Battling Yuxia Again Little B asterisk start. How dare you show your face to me? Yuxia looked incredibly angry, seeing Hansen approach in an attempt to stop him. Hansen summoned disloyal knight. The gold raven was still evolving, so he knew he couldn't personally put up much of a fight without it. The last time he fought Yiksha, he had only just woken up. Now, he could be much stronger. Disloyal knight cast his halo and threw a punch towards Yiksha. Yiksha did not evade, though. He fearlessly went forward to meet with disloyal knight and threw a punch of his own. When the two fists collided with each other, they generated a massive shockwave. But even though the halo had worked its magic, Yiksha was still stronger than Disloyal Knight. He was the victor in that first strike, hurling Disloyal Knight backwards. Yiksha's face changed, and he said, A halo super beast soul? Hansen was dismayed, seeing the effects not weakening Yiksha as much as he had hoped. It had worked on him, but not to the point that he could not fight back. This meant Yiksha had to be close to opening his tenth gene lock. Yiksha, I knew I should have come looking for you. But today, you have delivered yourself to me, so there's no foul. Come here. Let me kill you. Hansen just wanted to infuriate Yiksha, which was a simple enough task. Yiksha knew this, but he complied anyway and said, If you want to die that much, I'll grant you your wish. Yiksha leapt forward, but this time, it was towards Xiang Yin. That was his reason for being in this place, after all. Stopping her was his number one priority. Hansen commanded Disloyal Knight to charge forth and stop him, but he was very slow compared to Yiksha. Hansen knew he'd have to chip in, so he drew his Teya and Phoenix sword. Wearing his Manus armor and dragon wings, he flew forward. Yiksha had been weakened by the halo, so with the Phoenix techniques of flight Hansen had learned, he was able to catch up. Hansen would not use his Super King spirit body unless it was absolutely necessary. His fitness was still not up to par with a King spirit. If he wanted to be a match for Yiksha, he'd need another thousand fitness levels. But it was Disloyal Knight's halo that evened the odds. Yiksha saw Hansen fly before him to prevent his passage, so he threw a punch and said, Use your creepy skill. If you don't, you won't be able to fight me. You want me to use that to kill a pathetic, little king spirit like you? Pa, you're only worthy of my bottom shelf skills. Hansen, with his phoenix techniques, dodged the incoming strike and retaliated with his own. Yiksha believed Hansen's movements were strange, so he said, Against my speed, I'm afraid you'll be killed before you even know what hits you. It must be sad to know you'll die without even knowing how. Yuksha sped up once more. His weakened body was managing to move even faster now, and when Hansen next saw him, his lecherous fingers were reaching forth to strike Hansen's eyes. He evaded the fingers by an inch, but not without his helmet being scratched. Hansen felt the marks that had been delivered and his face changed. Only Yiksha's nails had scratched his helmet, but even so, they had almost broken his super armor. If it wasn't for his phoenix techniques, the scratches would have gone through and shredded his head like a rotting melon. Yiksha wasn't looking to waste time with the distraction that was Hansen, though. He moved forward with the haste of a near teleportation level of speed and grabbed Hans Sr. A red mist then began to envelop Hansen as he opened the ninth gene lock of the Blood Pulse Sutra. The red mist dyed his armor and weaponry a creepy crimson color. He cast Heresy Mantra as well. The refined and purified blood began pumping and coursing through his body. His kidney produced a large amount of energy to fuel all this and keep Hansen going in the struggle. But still, it didn't prove enough to keep up with Yaksha. His chest was cut up and the lacerations began to bleed. It was quite terrifying to see himself be delivered such wounds, despite wearing such sturdy armor. It is no wonder he is one of the generals. He must definitely be as strong as Xiang Yin. Hansen flapped his wings, slipped Yiksha's grasp, 
and flew forward to catch up with him. Then, he cast Dual Blade. Yiksha's attack had not severely damaged Han's senator. Killing Han Sen would be a trivial task for him, but he knew he had to stop Xiang Yin's ascension first. Disloyal Knight finally caught up and punched Yuxia in the back. This was all Han Sen needed to keep doing to slow him down. With Disloyal Knight there, keeping him occupied would be far easier. Yuxia, feeling something else come towards him from behind, turned to look. There, he saw Han Sen racing towards him, prompting him to spread his wings. In the moment Yiksha spread those wings, his speed became unfathomably quick. Ping! Disloyal Knight's fist could not catch up, and Hansen could only see a blurry shadow speed away from him. But then, a Hansen received a hit to his chest, which sent him flying away. Hansen was thrown through a rock, splitting it. On his chest were five bloody holes, his heart had almost been ripped out. You should be proud of yourself, for that strike not to have killed you. Now, go away. Yiksha mockingly stated before turning around to resume his flight towards Xiang Yin. He did not want her to take that last step. Chapter 1146 Using the Fifth Dong Xian. A shadow of blood emerged from the floor as Han Sen barred Yiksha's way once more. Do you really want to die that much? That's fine by me. Yiksha was now getting infuriated with Han's senator. He and disloyal knight had wasted too much time already, and Yiksha knew now that he had to take them out. Yiksha's wings were strong but he could not remain at that speed the whole time. He flapped the wings and appeared in front of Hansen with a whooshing sound. Yiksha tried to grab Hansen, but he failed. Hansen had dodged it. Yiksha's face curdled like sour milk and he barked. That must have been a coincidence. How could you evade my Yiksha speed? Hansen was delighted at what he had just managed to do. Hansen was indeed much slower than Yiksha, but he had opened his fifth tier of the Dongshan Sutra. His ability to read the minds of others was really coming into its own. Yiksha wanted to eliminate Hansen with a burning desire. It was a simplistic notion, and it was reflected in the workings of his mind. Hansen knew exactly what he was thinking in this endeavor. I am going to dig his heart out. Hansen heard his mind speak these words and reacted before Yiksha even made a move. Although Hansen could not entirely dodge the next attack, he managed to get away with only a slight scratch. Is that all you've got, Yiksha? Hansen yelled and started laughing at his humiliation. Yiksha was as shocked as he was angry. The fact that Hansen's evasion had worked twice made it seem unlikely that he was just getting lucky. He can't catch up with my Yiksha speed. Yiksha used the same move to attack again. And like before, Hansen heard exactly what he proposed to do and when he proposed to do it. With effective judgment, he managed to dodge it. With the magic of the Dongshin Sutra and Phoenix techniques, plus the Blood Pulse Sutra and Disloyal Knight's power, Hansen did not even have to cast Super King Spirit right now. Queen was in shock, watching them fight like so. She said out loud, Wow, he's that strong already. I have my work cut out for me if I hope to keep up. After watching for a while, she began to feel depressed. Hansen's skill was on a whole different level than hers, and it made her feel useless. She almost felt as if she didn't deserve to be at his side. How did he do that? Queen watched Hansen with a complicated expression, but Queen was still Queen, and her will to improve and go on did not falter. In fact, after witnessing all this, it only grew. The fire of her heart was stoked with an even bolder flame. Queen continued to watch and observe Hansen's movements. She recalled how she used to teach Hansen heavenly go, but now it was almost the other way around. She viewed him intently, learning how to perform Phoenix techniques as he did. Queen was a very talented person, and when Hansen used Phoenix techniques, they inspired her greatly. What Queen considered to be the most valuable of Hansen's abilities were his skills of prediction. She had no clue how Hansen managed to dodge half the attacks he always did, particularly so now, with the frightening foe that was Yiksha. Because Hansen was much slower, which was plain to see, she thought it'd be impossible for him to dodge and evade in the manner he was doing. The only way he could stay ahead was if he knew what the attacker was going to perform beforehand. How Hansen might have done so enthralled her. And every time, in succession, Hansen did indeed dodge with success. It was an excellent show. Queen did not know Hansen had learned the Dong Shen Sutra, though. She just thought he was a brilliant guesser. Queen was a very talented person, as well. Even Huang Fu Xiongqing told her she was perfect for the learning of Heavenly Go. But now, as she watched Hansen, she believed herself to not be half as good. She thought she was lame, in comparison. 
If my talents are as rare as others say, then what does he have that I or others don't? What magic propels him? Queen was in shock and awe over his display. Queen was not one to concede or throw in the towel, though. The better Hansen was, the better she wanted to be. And that was an admirable trait. Hansen did not know this was the way Queen felt. The Dongxian Sutra was the reason he could fight as he was. Hansen was currently fighting like a dragon, and with disloyal knight by his side, he was only getting better and better against his nemesis. He was used to predicting the moves of his enemies, and his talent with this was only getting better. Yikshot was moving extremely fast, and although he delivered the occasional scrape, it was happening less and less often. Hansen was being dealt less and less damage. While Hansen fought, a power came from someplace to the side. He blocked it with his arm. Cha. A gray spear pierced through his arm and cut through his bone. Hansen looked to where the spear might have come from, and he noticed it was the Rat King that was stood atop the pillar. It was laughing, and then it turned into another spear and flew towards Hans Sr. With the Rock Rats now joining the fight, seeking to stop Hans Sound, things were about to go very bad. It wasn't just the Rat King looking to join the fray, either. The Toad King, Cricket King, and other creatures all took aim at Hans Sr. Seeing the creatures all wanting to kill him, Hansen understood what was going on. All the super creatures there wanted Xiang Yin to fail so they could dine on her flesh. Just like Yiksha, none of them wanted her to succeed. Chapter 1147 Crimson Fruit Even more creatures were joining the fray. A dozen insects, each a meter long, began to rise from the lake. The super creatures were beelining for Hansen, that much was clear. They wanted nothing more than to dine on Xiang Yin's flesh but they had previously been unable to disrupt her ascension. Now that Yiksha had appeared, proving formidable enough to do so and give the creatures what they desired, they had hope. But Hansen had come along to stop Yiksha, and with only him in their way, they all thought it best to chip in and stop the meddler. Hansen had done what he could in the time he had, but under fire from so many super creatures, he knew it would now be best to run. While he wished to save Xiang Yin and ensure her success, Disloyal Knight and the Blue Dinosaur were not enough to repel the assault of a dozen super creatures. Even if Hansen did stay and fight, Yiksha would be free to fly towards that door while the super creatures kept his foe occupied. Remaining there would be a pointless endeavor, and stopping Yiksha any further would be silly. Run! Hansen yelled back towards Queen and the Blue Dinosaur. Blue Dinosaur was no sharper than a bag of socks, but even it wasn't dumb enough to try to withstand a dozen super creatures. It knew it was time to run, and so it did. Queen was atop it, and she rode it back into the tunnels they had come from. Hansen tried to veil the seven senses of the creatures, so they could neither hear nor see him. But its effectiveness on super creatures was practically null, and it did not quell their raging stampede towards him. All Hansen could do was focus on his flight out. You had it coming, Yuksha Koli mocked, before turning to go for the door. The nine steps Xiang Yin had traversed were brutal and endowed with a hungry fire that ravaged all who sought to ascend. She was little more than a shadow at this point, and that shadow was flickering faintly, as if it was about to be completely dispelled by a dazzling light. Xiang Yin had been aware of what was occurring outside of the door, and she had been touched by Han Sen's bravery in trying to secure safe passage for her. When he fled from the attacks of the super creatures, she completely understood. Nearing the end of her painful journey, Xiang Yin decided to forget about Yiksha who was now homing in on her. She now had to focus on completing what she had started. She concentrated on withstanding the fire that sought to incinerate her. She could not allow her mind to waver, falter, or be distracted by the incoming threat. If her mind wandered for a second, it'd be her demise. Maybe this is my fate. Xiang Yin was still composed, and she didn't feel hatred for the one who came for her. Hansen had already fought on her behalf for a while but she hadn't yet been able to make that final step. Even if Yiksha wasn't there to disturb her, she was teetering on the brink of failure. This was a life and death moment for her. This was the single moment that would decide her future, for there would be no return to the present. Xiang Yin had no choice now but to ascend. She could not return, she could only go on. Go on or fall. The jelly-like fruit would vaporize shortly after becoming ripe, so she couldn't eat it anywhere else at any other time. Yuksha had now reached the door. He could tell Xiang Yin was about to fail, even if he hadn't come to meddle with her ascension. It is a shame you have become my enemy, but I cannot allow you to go to the fourth god's sanctuary, Yuksha said as he watched her burn. 
Xiang Yin paid no heed to his words and maintained her focus on the task at hand. Although she looked like she was going to fail, just in case, Yuxia pulled out something to throw beyond the door. Yuxia had not yet opened ten gene locks, so he was not foolish enough to enter himself. If he went inside, he'd be turned into soot in a matter of seconds. So, aware of this, he had an item. If he threw this item inside, there was a high chance it would secure her demise. What Yiksha was holding was a black metal fruit called a crimson fruit. It was attuned with the element of fire, and it had been obtained from a king spirit tree. If he threw it inside, it could pollute the holy, cleansing fire. The holy fire cleansed those who walked through it. It rinsed and burned away past sins and removed your old body to provide a new one that was spotless. It was a necessary process to become a demigod. Once the tenth step had been reached, you would become a demigod. Yuxia wanted to pollute the holy fire, though. The dirt of the fruit was said to warp and sour the cleansing process and provide greater damage to whoever walked through it. Xiang Yin, I will take your place in the fourth god sanctuary and find ancient devil emperor. Yuxia smiled as he prepared to chuck the fruit inside. Xiang Yin believed there now to be no hope. Seeing the fruit leave Yuxia's hand, she sighed. But the moment the fruit was about to cross through the doorframe, it stopped. It appeared as if something was pulling it back. In the next second, the flight of the fruit was course-corrected, and it ended up flying in the opposite direction. A hand then grabbed the crimson fruit. Yuxia saw it happen, and he realized that someone had just claimed his fruit. It's you. Yuxia and Xiang Yin both exclaimed. Hansen, all bloodied, now possessed the fruit. He smiled and said, you are a noob who does not even have ten gene locks open. You're using this to disrupt her ascension? Cheap. It's a shame it's mine now. You are dead. Yuxia's face turned green. He flapped his wings and soared towards Han Sr. Chapter 1148 Torturing Yuxia Yuxia was furious. He only had one crimson fruit, as it was a treasure from a king spirit tree that could only provide one with each harvest. That harvest took 100,000 years to grow. He wouldn't be able to receive another one quite so easily. But while Yiksha was angry, he was not in panic mode yet. The crimson fruit may not have entered the door, but its appearance had still distracted Xiong Yin quite a bit. She looked to be at the end of her tether, and taking that last step seemed out of her reach. Hansen had been grievously injured, but he had come back alone. The super creatures were still on his trail, so it was something that was in Yiksha's favor. And so, Yiksha decided to attack Han Senator. He thought it was about time Hansen got a pummeling, and he very much wanted to see him writhing in agony when the posse of super creatures also caught up. But all of a sudden, Hansen blazed with a bright white light. His hair turned white and flowed down to his feet. His eyes turned as white as his gleaming, ivory armor. Pat. Hansen clicked his fingers and turned the entire cavern into one koi storm cloud. Coins manifested in the air and dropped from every inch of that place. The creatures that sought to catch up with Hansen were immediately suppressed and brought to the ground. Yaksha's body was pumping with pure, unbridled hatred and rage. He swung his lethal nails around to slice the coins. But unlike before, Hansen did not keenly evade Yaksha. All he did was raise the corner of his lips. In his ordinary form, Hansen was too weak to block Yaksha's attacks. That's why he had to focus on evasion. Now things were different. Although Yaksha's speed was still greater, Super King Spirit made Hansen stronger. What's more, between all that was going on, Yiksha's mind was screaming. Ping. Yiksha's nails were about to descend on Hansen, but he did not move until they were about to skewer his eyeballs. And that move was to grab Yiksha by the waist and prevent him from being able to move. How? Green, pulsating veins scrawled over Yiksha's arms. Try as he might to resist, he could not move or free himself. Hansen's hands were like chains, tying up his waist. You are right. You are dead. Hansen said, just as his white light grew in intensity. Hansen's grip on Yiksha tightened, as the mad and flailed in hopeless resistance. Yiksha tried using his nails to slice Hansen's belly. He was fast that not even light itself would have been able to dodge. But Yiksha's failing was his anger, and how he screamed on the inside. Hansen knew exactly what was going through his mind, and he knew what to do. Ping. Hansen threw his other fist to repel Yiksha's incoming nail strike. There was so much power in that parry, it broke every finger on Yiksha's hand. They all bent backwards like broken twigs. But the fist didn't just stop there. Hansen's fist continued going forward right into Yiksha's face. Ping. Yiksha wanted to scream, 
but he couldn't after that. His lips and jaw had been shattered and smashed. They were twisted and ruined so much that Yiksha could barely control his mouth. His body leaned back. His other arm was still held by Hansen. And now, Hansen gave it a tug. Hansen pulled Yiksha forward and delivered another punch. Yiksha's skull cracked, and the force of that second punch sent a shockwave through the cavern. Ping, ping, ping. Yiksha would take a punch, fall back limply, then be tugged forward only to be hit again. This process repeated again and again. Eventually, one of Yiksha's eyeballs fell out of its socket. He no longer looked human. Yiksha's speed was useless against Hansen in such a state. His brain had been rattled too much. His mind was a mishmash of displaced thoughts that scrambled to gather cohesion. Hansen, seeing Yiksha was on the razor's edge between life and death, let him go. And then, with both fists, planned to give him one last brutal hit. Alu alu alu. Hansen suddenly screamed like Xie Chin King. The last hit he sought to deliver turned to a great mini, and he punched like a nutter. Over and over he threw his fists, with each one making him feel better than before. All of Yiksha's bones had been broken, and eventually, his meat and skin were little more than a crumpled sack to contain a collapsing skeleton. Yiksha squealed like a dying pig, and in his final moments, Hansen moved forward to pick him up. The creatures that sought to attack Hansen stopped, not wanting to meddle with such a frightening foe. The creatures weren't exactly cooperating. They were all competing for the meat. So, it was not like they could rely on each other to take on Hansen in unison. Hansen's murderous and intimidating presence stopped anyone or anything from harboring thoughts of potentially trying to attack or kill him. Ha ha. Yiksha, he who had been brutally beaten like so, suddenly laughed. What are you laughing at? Hansen asked as he grabbed him by the loose and torn garments that still hung from Yiksha. My spirit stone is not here, you fool. I'll respawn, should you kill me. And Siogin? She's going to die. You were unable to save her. I may not have one, but you still lost. Isn't that so sad? Ha ha. Yiksha continued to laugh as his other eyeball dropped from its socket. He actually seemed very happy. Chapter 1149 Kill You Forever Hansen looked inside the door and saw the shadow kneeling. There were no more musical notes or energy signatures left to scan. Xiang Yin would probably not make it. You lose. Badly. Now, watch as she dies. I am different. I have many more ways to play with you. Yiksha began to cackle like a mad scientist. How can you be so certain I'll watch her die? Hansen said. Yiksha spat out blood and mumbled, You are only a little stronger than me. You have only opened nine gene locks. You cannot enter there. And who said I'll need to enter to save her? Hansen then brought out his bone son. What's that for? Are you going to play a requiem on her behalf? Or perhaps you're going to somehow play the Song of Gondurf? Yiksha jested in spite. I can play that, if that is what you would like to hear. Hansen then brought the soon to his lips. He blew into the head, causing a stream of white light to cast its way into the door. The power was the same that the soon created, and he used this to recharge her body. How? Xiang Yin felt this power enter her body, providing her support before she collapsed completely. She only needed a little bit more power to reach the tenth step, and with that power, she had hope. Xiang Yin's notes filled the air, and her scent refragranced the atmosphere. With Han Sen's help, she was slowly able to move forward and take one last step. Impossible. She only played it once. How can you know the Song of Gondurv already? Yiksha barked. Carried by the gentle sound waves of that divine music, Xiang Yin leaned forward, ready to take that last step. No, it should be me who makes that final step. Yiksha looked insane as he watched Xiang Yin take that one last step. Yiksha's eyes were going bigger and bigger, unable to believe what he was seeing. Boom. The tenth step was scaled, and when Xiang Yin set both feet on it, a flame ravaged her entire body. The light was too bright to witness what was happening now. But it eventually dimmed, and when it did, Hansen saw her reborn. She looked so holy, like a divine fairy or angelic being. Xiang Yin spoke something to him, but Hansen could not hear the words. He could only read her lips. The door closed, and as it did, Hansen reviewed the words he believed her to have spoken. I'll wait for you in the fourth god sanctuary. Hansen was not entirely sure that was what she said. She pointed at him, as if she wished to say something further but the door closed before she could. Boom. The door was closed, separating the two for good. Hansen was depressed, 
having not even been able to receive a thank you for his efforts. But Hansen did not have time to dwell on it. He picked up Yuxia and just said, You said you have many ways, right? I can tell you right now that you don't. I'll kill you every single time I see you. So, my advice to you is to keep that spirit stone safe. If you don't, Hansen punched through Yuxia's skull and tossed his body away. Yuxia's body faded from sight, warping him back to his spirit stone. When he respawned, he mulled over the words Hansen had spoken to him. Hansen's speech was one of remarkable confidence, and it made Yuxia angry to realize that he was now the weaker one. I'll make you regret this. Yuxia left his shelter, making this one final vow. Hansen decided to make his way out of the underground realm. He exited his Super King spirit mode and his body was exhausted. So, he called for Golden Growler to carry him back. Not long after, Hansen came across the blue dinosaur and Queen. Queen looked incredibly relieved to see Hans Sr. Let's go back to the shelter as soon as we can, Queen said, as she ran over to hold Hansen in her arms. I'm not going back. Those asterisk shoal super creatures tried to kill me, so I'm going to exact my revenge. If it wasn't for the super creatures getting involved, Hansen wouldn't be in such a condition. He recalled their names and knew he had to kill them. They lead armies of noobs. That's it. And when they recover, I'm going to make light work of them, Hansen said. Hansen set up a camp outside the cave's exit, and when he recovered, he thought of going after the Rat King first. He wanted to take its life Geno essence. A few days later, he was back in tip-top shape. With Blue Dinosaur, he returned to the underground. Chapter 1150, Blacklist Hansen believed there to be many super creatures residing in that underground realm, and he believed he'd have an easy time venturing in to slay them whenever he desired. It'd be an efficient way for him to become stronger. But Hansen, after returning there, was unable to find one after a few days of subterranean travel. There were no average but strong creatures, either. There were only ordinary rock rats, toads, and crickets to be found. This can't be right. Why aren't there any decent creatures for me to slay? Hansen frowned. Queen observed the surroundings and said, These creatures are smarter than we gave them credit. They are watching us, observing our every move. But down there, they had no other efficient way to track the creatures they sought. They couldn't avoid being watched, as the rats were everywhere. The super creatures had placed Hansen on their blacklist, so they avoided him at all costs. Hansen thought he could easily nab some life geno essences and super beast souls by venturing down there, but like usual, Events didn't quite turn out as planned. I am getting tired of this damp, godforsaken hole. Hansen sat his bum down on a rock as he spoke. Queen looked at Hansen, wondering what had happened the day Blue Dinosaur carried her away from the region that contained the tree. She did not know why Hansen remained or what he had done when out of sight. The fact that they were afraid of Hansen and evaded him at all costs aroused her suspicion. Fine. We'll go to the spirit shelter. It's not like a spirit shelter can run off, too. Hansen, in his depression, decided to conquer a shelter. The blue dinosaur then carried them both to the spirit shelter. There, they saw Lu Yunwei again. It did not seem like a coincidence, but Lu Yunwei approached them first, asking, Why have you come back here? If the spirit sees us, we will be killed. That's okay. We're going to conquer this shelter, if you don't mind. Not that your minding will sway my resolve. Run along and tell Wu Tian and the others to duck and take cover. Hansen did not beat around the bush. Li Yunwei looked at Hansen as if he was a madman. And just how exactly are you going to do that? Everyone knew Hansen was injured, and for him to proclaim he was going to take down a shelter, he thought he must have been having a laugh. Hansen patted Blue Dinosaur and simply said, This is a good boy. He is what it takes to get the job done. Li Yunwei gave a wry smile and said, even if your pet is very good, there's only one of them. There must be at least 20 sacred blood creatures in this place, and that's not to mention all the royal spirits. Li Yunwei would not care if it was someone else planning a futile attack on the shelter. But as a surpasser of Starry Group, he had been ordered to maintain a good relationship with Han Senator that was why he was being nice and showing so much concern. He didn't understand why Han Sen was the son-in-law of the president, though, with a blood relation to Luo Haidang. Regardless, that family had given up on Hansen ever since they learned his body had been damaged. Lu Yunwei wasn't sure why he and others of the Starry Group still had to please the young invalid. But orders were orders, and he was still going to do as he was bitten. He thought the blue dinosaur was nothing more than a sacred blood creature. 
When the sacred blood creatures of the shelter attacked, Hansen would be nothing more than a midday snack. I thought there might be. Well, run off and go tell the others now. Hansen did not fancy explaining much of anything. Lu Yunwei shook his head and ran off. He didn't want to sacrifice any of his people in what he believed to be a futile fight. Lu Yunwei told Wu Tian what was going on, to which Wu Tian replied, Even if his pet was strong, that's ridiculous. Does he really expect to take down this shelter with some half decent pet and a woman? Pa, let's just find some place to hide. We shouldn't be a part of this, Lu Yunwei said. They gathered the other humans and found an excuse to leave the shelter for a time. Hansen set the time of the assault and then brought his blue dinosaur there. Before the blue dinosaur went in to deliver its first strike, though, Queen was already running ahead into battle to slay what she could. Lu Yun Wei, in the meantime, had run far away from the shelter. Old Lu, do you think maybe Hansen is healed? An elder surpasser asked. I doubt it. The demigods and top doctors said nothing could be done for him, and he'd never be healed. Not even Luo Height Inc. could help, Lu Yun Wei said. While they discussed, they suddenly felt the contracts binding them break. They were all in absolute shock, and they looked incredibly happy. Wu Tian screamed in joy, shouting, How? How did Hansen take on that shelter? Let's go back and take a look, Lu Yunwei said. They ran back to see nothing but the charred remnants of destruction. The ruined bodies of dead creatures lay littered everywhere. Hansen and Queen were walking away as they arrived. Hansen's clothes had not even been wrinkled whereas the woman beside him looked as if she had just taken a bath in a sea of blood. Her gold scimitar was caked in blood and fleshy bits. What was even more shocking was the master of the shelter, Dark Prince, was now following Hansen like a slave. He was willingly obeying Hans Sr.